What is going on guys? Welcome back to the algorithms and data structures tutorial series. In today's video, we're going to talk about queues and priority queues, which are essentially very similar to a stack, but work in a different way, use a different principle, not the first in last out principle, not the last in first out principle, but the last in last out or the first in first out principle. So let us get right into it. So as I already mentioned in the introduction, a queue is very similar to a stack, but now we don't have the operations push and pop, but we have the operations and queue and DQ, which is essentially the same thing. But the difference is that we're not looking at the top position, but DQ is looking at the last position and NQ is looking at the first position. So it looks a little bit like a stack flipped on its side, we have this structure here. And these are the units here, the data units. And whenever we DQ something, it gets out of the list from the end and or from the tail, you could say. And whenever we NQ something, it gets in front of the list in, in the first positions. Now, this, of course, means, as I already said in the introduction, that this is a first in first out principle or a last in last out principle, whatever enters the queue first, leaves the queue first. So this means if I enter a red element, I'm going to put it here, then I enter new elements. So here will be an extra element and the red element, uh, or actually not an extra element, we're going to push an element. So whenever we DQ, NQ, whatever, we're going to process this element here and red element whenever we NQ something new here will be shifted uh, to the right. So we're always essentially in a queue like manner shifting the elements forward. So what enters first leaves first this is a very simple uh, principle, basically. Now the runtime complexities obviously are the same as for the stack because you know, we have the same operations just looking at different addresses, we don't need to uh, do anything particular uh, special here. The only thing we do is we push at the beginning and we pop at the end. So it's just another name for the same operation. So enqueuing can be done obviously in constant time. Dequeuing can be done in constant time as well. Uh, now where are queues used? Essentially, they're used uh, in all kinds of different uh, application fields. I can tell you one example where we use them in this on this particular channel. One of the first videos that I made on this channel is called threaded port scanner where we're uh, yeah, scanning ports using multi threading. And what we did there because we had uh, thousands of ports to be scanned, and we have like 500 threads running or 50 threads running, whatever. And all these threads are going to scan the ports. And now what you can do, of course, is you can define a counter variable uh, that says, okay, counter equals zero. And whenever a thread wants to check a port, what we do is we increase counter by one and process the number. But the problem is we have 50 threads accessing this variable at the same time. So sometimes it will happen that three threads at the same time decide to increase the number, then we skip three ports, or sometimes we're not going to uh, increase uh, at the right moment and three or four threads are going to scan the same port at the same time, which does not make a lot of sense uh, using this variable access by by 50 threat or, uh, threats or something, uh, let alone by 100 threats. Uh, so what we can do and what we did in the in the tutorial is use a queue structure, where we essentially had all these ports. So we just entered all the ports. And then we said, okay, one, two, three, four, and so on up until any number of uh, ports that we cared about, for example, 1024 or something. Uh, and what we did then is each thread, if they wanted to scan a port had to DQ an element. So thread one, for example, thread two, thread three, uh, thread one was faster than the other two and wanted to process an element. So it dequeued the one It processes the one. Now, there is no chance two or three are going to process one as well, because they also have to dequeue an element from the queue. And once one is dequeued, we cannot dequeue it a second time unless it's in there a second time, of course. Um, so it's going to get two. And even if they access the queue at the same time, they're not going to get the same element because you have to dequeue it. And you cannot dequeue something that's not there. Um, so this is one application that I personally already did. I used queues already in Python for developing a threaded port scanner. Now then we also have something called the priority queue. And the priority queue is not operating using the first in first out principle, nor is it operating using the first in last out principle. So the priority queue works differently in a, a little bit more complex way, which is using priorities. So we have still the same methods and queue and DQ. 
but now we're not necessarily always dequeuing uh, or essentially we are dequeuing at uh, the last position so at the uh, at the end of the priority queue but we're not enqueuing them necessarily at the beginning so what we have is imagine it's something like that you have uh, data packages here and these data packages not only have a value but they also have a priority so you have for example the value up here which is I don't know a x y z whatever and then you have priorities here so for example a higher priority could mean uh, that it's more important so a higher number could mean that it's more important so the z could be priority five the y could be priority three and these two can be priority one which means that whenever we process something the highest priority gets dequeued first and you can say five means it's the highest priority you could also say one is the highest priority whatever you want uh, but let's say the the higher the number the higher the number the higher the priority and in this case z would then be the highest priority so when we call the dequeue method we're not necessarily just calling or essentially we are necessarily just uh, popping out the last element but the last element will always be the one with the highest priority so when we enqueue a new uh, data package we're not just going to put it at the beginning here we're going to ask what priority it has because we can go ahead and say uh, if we want to enter if we want to enqueue something like I don't know uh, H and H has a priority of 4 what we need to do is we cannot just go ahead and put it here we would have to put it in here in between three and five in between y and z this is where it belongs now the idea is quite simple it's not that hard but the question is how can you implement that in an efficient way because of course what you could do is you could uh, use a linked list of course and just enter it here say okay this is h with priority four and then use a sorting algorithm or uh, use some sort of getting it there or scanning through all the elements and determining the position iterating through the whole list and in the worst case you know you would need something like n or n log n uh, you would have n or n log n runtime complexity which is not a good thing because you would have to go through the whole list and find the position and then enter it there um, the question is how can you implement a priority queue in an efficient way and this is the topic of the next video because the answer to this is the so-called heap data structure that we're going to talk about in the next video because with the heap data structure dequeuing and enqueuing are possible in uh, logarithmic time so in in big o of log n and we're going to talk about how this works in the next video so that's it for today's video hope you enjoyed it hope you learned something if so let me know by hitting the like button and leaving a comment in the comment section down below also make sure you subscribe to this channel in order to see more future videos for free today we covered the queue and the priority queue we got a basic idea for the priority queue in the next video we're going to use the heap data structure in order to implement a priority queue in an efficient way uh, this is a pretty exciting topic I think because it shows you how the intelligent use of a data structure and some understanding of algorithms, data structures, and also trees, graph theory uh, can help you to solve such a problem as implementing a priority queue in logarithmic time. And this is a very interesting topic and we're going to talk about it in the next video. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. See you in the next video and bye.